before about, okay, we have these, these three that you originally picked um, for, for the reasons we talked about. So are you looking at kind of the next generation of gene therapies and how, what would you look for there and how would you deliver them? Yeah, for our next generation of uh, therapeutic targets, um, I mentioned epigenetics uh, earlier, and uh, our goal is to re-regulate all of your genes back to an earlier state. Uh, A very powerful tool for this is to use epigenetic modifying factors, um, similar to the Yamanaka factors, where you do this partial reprogramming, which has uh, been a very hot topic of lately where you temporarily turn the cell toward a stem cell and then let it relax back into its normal cell function. People have shown benefits from doing this partial reprogramming. Uh, I did a, had a collaboration with Sinclair Lab where they were able to show um, rejuvenating effects in the optic nerve from uh, an AAV that delivered OSK. Uh, these are three genes that are part of this um, uh, reprogramming uh, set that uh, that came from the uh, pluripotent stem cell field. And uh, our next generation of therapies is taking advantage of this idea that you can re-regulate all the genes in a cell back to an earlier state and make that entire cell younger. And if you can infect enough cells in a tissue, the entire organ. And if you can in- infect enough organs in the body, the entire person. And so our goal is to start with a very specific tissue and show that we can have a large effect on a particular disease and then expand the different tissues and cells that we can get into throughout the body so that we can reverse aging systemically in each individual cell. (laughs) Right, interesting. But that that seems like a different direction from your current therapies. So would you also look to directly increase the production of other proteins in the way that you are with FGF21? So the reason we started with FGF21 was to tackle one problem at a time. So FGF21 and TGF-beta by being secreted uh, allowed us to focus on the paradigm of using aging-related proteins to treat specific age-related diseases and not have to worry about getting into every single cell or even a particular tissue type to treat that particular disease. We were able to aim it at the liver and get systemic expression and show that we can treat multiple different diseases. So that was step one, to use those aging genes to treat age-related diseases and show that if you re-regulate two proteins, you can have an amazing effect across a number of different age-related diseases. Step two for us is to now take on that extra challenge of getting into specific cell types but using more powerful tools to have an even bigger effect on entire gene networks rather than just those two particular genes. So it's the same underlying concept of re-regulating proteins back to what they were when you were younger and healthier. Uh, but now we're going into inside the cell to do that in a more powerful way. I mean, I see like one of them as, as, as ex- exogenously but although it's inside you, but you are generating these proteins, whereas the other one is just making you younger so that you generate them naturally yourself. Would be. Yes, yeah. I, 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 if you re-regulate the proteins inside the cell, then you should end up with more FGF21 and less TGF beta one uh, systemically as well. This video is brought to you by Bioptimizers. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for hundreds of reactions in the body and impacts everything, including sleep and muscle and bone health. It is difficult to get sufficient magnesium through our food. In our efforts to remain fit and healthy, my wife and I frequently exercise, after which it's important to recover well and get restful sleep. To help us with this, we chose Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizer because it blends all seven essential forms of magnesium into one effective supplement while also using all natural ingredients and being gluten, soy and lactose free. It has improved our recovery and sleep quality since we've been taking it. And we're happy to tell you that Bioptimizers are offering a 10% discount for Magnesium Breakthrough to Modern Healthspan audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description to get a 10% discount with coupon code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. Uh, Any kind of a timeline for when you start looking at that or is that? That's already in development. 
Um, yeah. That is our next generation therapy. Our first therapeutic is RJB01, which is in uh, going into mm-hmm. ARVC. Right. So I, I, I saw you also have RJB02. Uh, is that also moving forward? Yes, that is the other combination from the PNAS paper from mm-hmm. my postdoc work, which is uh, TGF beta receptor 2 plus alpha clotho. And we've seen uh, really great effects in numerous diseases for that one as well. Heart failure, kidney failure, and osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. Osteoarthritis is interesting because it's one of the largest um, things that can interfere with health span and movement. Mm -hmm. If your mobility is limited, both in dogs and people, that uh, has a compounding effect over time, whereas you're not moving around as much, you're not exercising as much, you're uh, gaining weight, you're not as healthy and you can end up with a lot of comorbidities. And um, so it's a big problem, both in the animal and human health space. Uh, and a lot of the human interventions can't be applied to animals like uh, knee replacements or hip replacements. So, uh, yeah. So are, are you trialing, are you planning to trial RGBO2 in animals? Yeah, that's, that's also currently under development. We have, uh, uh, we're exploring that use in um, another pilot study run through university for osteoarthritis indications in animals, um, and then move that again into humans at the same parallel courses there. Does alpha clotho also help with uh, cognition? There have been numerous reports of its ability to enhance cognition and uh, neurological health in general. Um, we have not explored that directly, although uh, we are interested in doing that in the future as well. Okay, yes, that would be very interesting. Can I ask, what is your personal health protocol? And uh, is it kind of informed by your gene therapy? Uh, it is interesting. I um, I don't prescribe uh, ascribe to any particular uh, supplements or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I think the best thing that we can do right now is to exercise and eat well. Um, the uh, um, all the other pills and stuff. I, I sometimes you get reports where they're actually deleterious, uh, not just not just nothing. They're actually bad for you. So I, I, I don't know if any of the supplements really make that big of a difference. Um, if I had a stronger willpower, maybe I'd do calorie restriction, but I enjoy food too much. <laughs> so <laughs> I, uh, I, I won't be starving myself, but if there was an intervention that I would believe that we could do today, it would be calorie restriction to generally make you healthier. Um, but I'm, I'm putting my money on rejuvenate bio, um, obviating the need for, um, any of these supplements or anything to actually uh, make me healthier uh, in the long term. Well, that was kind of the, the, the idea behind the question is, is yeah, I mean, is, is that where you would see it going? Obesity tends to grow as you get older, right? Uh, is that just, is, is that because of the chemical, the, the me- metabolism changes or is it because we just become less active or is it both? I mean, is that something that could be fixed with rejuvenation? Yeah, I, you know, the, um, there was a paper a couple years ago that um, everybody always thought that your metabolism slows down as you age. And then this one paper came out a couple of years ago that was showing um, that metabolism doesn't materially change until you're in your 50s. And so this idea that, you know, in your 30s and 40s, your metabolism is slowing down they concluded that that's not true. I would say it's probably that you're you're not moving around as much as you did when you were younger. You're not playing as many sports. You have a lot of other things on your plate, like children and work. And so uh, I can imagine that that is a, a larger cause of the uh, increase in obesity. And just generally, you know, you don't have the time to cook healthy food and you're always on the run. And so you're just more eating more unhealthy, eating a lot of sugar. I think there's a lot of a lot of sugar out there and eliminating a lot of sugar from your diet is probably one of the best things you can do. <laughs> that would be very true. Uh, I just wondered like, so would a therapy that made you younger then because those things would still happen. So that, then it, it um, may not. Yeah. You're generally more resistant to all those things when you're mm-hmm. younger, right? Like even right. if you lay around in college, it's going to take a little bit more to make you overweight than it would if you're uh, mm-hmm. later in life. You're generally more resistant to stress and damage and different changes as well metabolically if you were younger. 
And so if we're able to make you reverse aging and actually reset the system, uh, we should be able to combat these effects of obesity and diabetes. Uh, specifically with RJBO1, it was able to make mice lose weight regardless of how mm. much they ate. So even though they were on the McDonald's diet every day, uh, they actually still lost weight to become a lean, normal mouse um, while eating a high fat diet. And so hopefully you'll see that in the dogs as well. We actually have seen that in the dogs that we are able to see weight loss in the dogs as well. Okay, excellent. Transmitted so both from mice to dogs, both across heart failure and obesity. So it's very exciting that the therapy, the therapeutic benefits of these proteins have now translated out of the lab and into the real world in people's pets, not just from small animal to large animal in a lab, but actually into the real world, which is a, a less controlled setting. So it's it's very exciting to see the effects out in the real world. It is. And I mean, and the, the whole once and done uh, style is just uh, so good, right? It's like you just go and get it, get injected and then um, don't have to take your pills every morning when you wake up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, and also, I guess it gives your liver a rest. It doesn't have to process all these chemicals every morning. It's true. It's true. Okay. So, um, Dr. Davidson, where can people find out more about your work and, and what you're doing? Yeah, um, you can go to our website, rejuvenatebio.com. Um, we're on LinkedIn and Facebook um, and Twitter. We don't have as large of a uh, uh, social media profile as some other companies, but uh, we do post updates when we have exciting news to share with everybody uh, on our website and those platforms as well. Okay, excellent. So we, we will definitely link to that and uh, to your papers, uh, especially the, the one from the George, George Church Lab. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me.